still debugging with print. That's why our code turns into chaos. In the next couple of minutes, I'll set up logging in Python so you get timestamps, log levels, and logs saved to a file, like real production apps. Let's import the logging module, and logging module is built in so you don't have to download it. What is actually logging? Logging is how an application records what it's doing over time, like progress, warning, errors, etc. First, we should configure how I want my logger to look like. So I'll write logging.basic.config, and here, first thing I want to set is the level. Logging has five levels. First one is the lowest, and fifth one is the highest one in the hierarchy. First one is debug. That's some internal details for developers. Info, those are some normal events like starting an app, user logging in, etc. Warning, something unexpected happened, but not fatal. Error, some operation failed, like we didn't open a file. And critical, app is in trouble, we should terminate the app. So here, by setting a level, it means what level of message I want to get. Let's say I write something like logging.info. This means I only want to get messages from levels that are info and above. Basically, I want to get the debug messages. Next key point is formatting. Formatting is actually how I want my logger to print a message. And here is some idea. This first part means print the current time. This here level name, it says print me a level name. And this here is the name of my logger. And this is the message that I want to provide. And now we can create our first logger. Logger, logger should be equal to logging.getLogger. And here I can write a name, for example, app, or I can write underscore name, and this will get the current path to this logger, which is in my case learning Python and then helper, but in some cases it will be also just main, like in this one here. And loggers are ID'd based on their name, so if you, you can't have logger with two same names. Also, the paths aren't separated with slashes, backslashes, or whatever, they'll always separate it with dots, no matter your operating system. And now, I can write some messages, for example, now when I run this, I will only see these levels because debug is below the info and I set up my level to be info. And the message is, is exactly how I wanted. It's the current date and time, the level, the name of my app, and also the message that they provided. So four key pieces in loggers are the actual logger, the handler. Handler is where logs go. Is it a console or a file? By default, it's on console, but I'll show you next how you can send them in a file. Next one is formatter, how you want to print your log. And the fourth key concept is level. Is it a debug, info, warning, error, or critical? So let's create a handler for file. For that, I'll need to import from my logging handlers, and then I need to import rotating file handler. Why rotating? Because it doesn't allow file to grow infinitely. After it reaches some point, it resets completely. Let's create a logger to be logging.getLogger. I'll write my app as the name of my logger. Then I'll set the logger level to be logging.info. Now let's make it a debug actually. Then I should create a formatter, fmt to be logging.formatter, and here pass the format. And now we can create our console and file logger. So I'll write my console to be logging.streamhandler. This means print everything on console. Then console. Now I can here of course, set a level, it will be info. Then I should set the format, so set formatter, FMT, and now I can create a file handler. File should be rotating file handler. First parameter should be the file name, app, 
app.log, then it should be the maximum bytes that I want my file to have. Let's make it 2 million. This is about 2 megabytes. Then I can set up a backup count so we can make 5 backup copies. And I can also put a certain encoding. Let's make encoding to be UTF 8. Again, I should set up the file level. And now I can add these console and file handler to my logger. So I need to write logger.addHandler console and then logger.addHandler file. And if I write messages like logger.debug and write debug here, this will send the message both to console and file, but not both of them will print that message because console has level of info and above and file has level of debug and above. Only file will get the debug, console will get the info. As you can see, I only have one line and the level is info, but if I open my project, there's app.log.txt file, and in here I have debug and info. As you can see, they also have colors. Now you're ready to write your own logging in your projects, but I want to show you a simple real world example so you can see how logging is implemented. Let's remove all of these and write logging dot basic configuration level should be logging dot info then format should be the same one as before and let's create a log to be logging dot get logger and I'll pass a name my app and if I have a function that will check if ID is correct and the correct ID is the ID that is not zero so here I'll have user ID and then log.info request ID and write percent %s. It's recommended to use percent %s instead of f strings because this evaluates lazily only when it's needed. Here I can write user ID. Now if user ID is actually zero, then I want to raise an error. Also, logger support exception, and you will see how. Value error, bad ID, log.info, OK ID, percent %s, user ID. And now let's write a for loop with certain IDs and check each one of them. For UID in 102, try and run this with UID. And if something happens, catch that exception and call log.exception. Now, this log.exception is used to trace back the error. It's for real debugging. If you've used Linux before, you know when you download something or run some command and there is an error, on the top it says what is the error and also it traces back and tells you what is the actual problem so you can understand it deeper. That's because of this log.exception. So now here I'll write failed ID UID. And we are safe to try the code. As you can see, it prints request ID, OK ID. It requests the ID zero, but it shows an error. And also, when you write log.exception and error occurs, by default, you will get this error message. I mean, error level message. And you have a traceback. It tells you what is the actual problem. Raise value error, value error, bad ID. And then we're going to have requested ID for two, but that ID is OK. Now you know how to use logging in Python instead of messy print statements. If you want a real project to practice this, watch my Python file organizer and try adding logging. And 
If you want more practical Python tutorials every week, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.